Hello, Timothy the Motivated Williams with the credit store. All right, we're going to be talking about today credit restoration, financial services, and how to get what you want out of life. I'm here with Ashley of the credit store. Where are you, Ashley? And Arkesha. Mm -hmm. Wait, put the camera. Get her mm -hmm. on the camera. All right, all right. So what we're going to be talking about today is how you can get your credit restored. How you can get what you want out of life. The majority of people have no idea what they can do with excellent credit. So therefore, they just walk through life vicariously, not knowing, hey, if I have my credit here, I could start me a business. I could take that credit to the bank and do what? Get a loan and start my business. But here's the problem with that. Most people don't know when you get your credit restored, there are, there's a mindset that you need to have. Because if you don't have that mindset, what will happen is you will get your credit restored and guess what? You will go out there and buy everything under the sun. Because I've done it. Because at one point I had nine credit cards, maxed all of them out. And guess what? Credit score went down. Why? Because I did not have the right credit education and the right financial education. The majority of the people don't because schools do not teach us what we need to know in life, in the real world, as far as credit, how money works, financial education. Now, let me ask you a question, Ashley. How long would it take you to save a million dollars? Take a while. A couple of two, three months. <laughs> I wish I could say two or three bucks. Okay, just give me a number. How long would it take you to say? Um, I would say, I mean, of course, I have to be very diligent, cut a lot of things out. Um, I would say probably um, maybe three to five years. Three to five years. Three to five years to save one million dollars. All right. Now, let me ask you another question. How long do you think it would take you to borrow a million dollars? Less than a year. Less than a year. Now, most people don't know this. With the right financial papers, you can borrow a million dollars in 15 minutes. With papers at. Say it again. <laughs> Say it again. Where the papers at? Where the papers at? That's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> because this is what you're going to learn here. How you can walk in the bank and borrow a million dollars. Because it is just that easy. With the right credit, the right business credit, the right P&L statement, the right financial papers, you can walk in there and do it. It's that easy. But a lot of people know what they think. It's easy to go do what? Play what? The lottery. The lottery. <laughs> but you have one in probably 99 billion of a chance of hitting the lottery of $400 million. And then actually, a lot of people don't know this. That's the worst way to get money, to inherit it, because you didn't earn it. So what's going to happen is you're just going to blow it. Most people hit the lottery and end up being broke because they don't have financial education. They don't understand how money works. And they just, next thing you know, taxes hit. They're in an emergency. And they just... So the goal is not to get into saving. Because what we're going to be talking about is investing. Now, I wrote a book which will be out soon. It's called How to Sell Yourself and Become Rich. The subtitles, Selling Yourself is the Best Sale You Ever Make, Investing Yourself is the Best Investment You'll Ever Make. This is what you want to invest in first. You. Because see, once you invest in you and you get the credit education, 
you can go and get that. But here's the problem. Schools have taught us to invest in everything under the sun but ourselves. They taught us to invest in a college education, a house, then get you a car, a job. They haven't even mentioned you. This is what I talk about. That's what my book covers. Because what happened to me was, when I lived in Atlanta, even before I wrote the book, I had two millionaires that mentored me. And what they did was they found out I was like a sponge. And I wanted to know how you do this. Because I had been reading this, but reading it is not enough. I need, because like you go to school, they give you a book, but they teach you. They don't just give you a book. So I, even though I was reading books, I needed to understand what I was reading. What I was reading. And so what they did was pretty much broke down to me. Okay, this is how you get here. This is what you want to. You know, they tell me things like corporate America is a legal pyramid. I had never heard that before. Mm -hmm. This was in 2004, 2005. I'm like, what are you talking about? But it was, they were saying what I had heard before, but they were saying it in a different way. And then they gave me what's called a millionaire's mindset, how millionaires think. And they told me millionaires don't think about getting some money and buying a car, brand new car. They don't think like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They think about buying a house and having that house be an investment pay for the car. So if I buy a house, I rent it out, those payments I get pay for the car. So if I lose my job, I'm still good. I go find another job, but I don't get behind on it. And this is what we need to know right now in the economy that we're living in is financial education. That's what we need in this new economy. Because right now, this is what most people are doing. They're saving. But here's the problem with saving. There's actually a formula from that. I minus E equals savings. Now what this is here is income. That E represents expenses. So there's an actual formula that most people live by. Income, which is your check. Most people working nine to five, they get a check. Whatever they get every Friday, they take some money out and pay their bills. The rest of it, they save. Here's the problem. After they pay their bills, there's nothing left over. Most people are living paycheck to paycheck, hand them out. So what you want to do is what? You don't want to pull back, because that's what most people's first instinct is. But timidity is not a characteristic for success. So you don't want to pull back. What you want to do is you want to increase your means. You don't want to go, oh, man, I got to start saving. I got to start pulling back. No, 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 no. That pulling back is not going to make you go out there and buy these houses to get what you want. You see what I'm saying? So another thing you don't want to look at is saving a dollar that's going to depreciate every time you turn around is not good. So what you want to do is take that money and invest it. But here's the problem. A lot of people invest in things and don't really know what they're doing. They're investing in, I'm going to get into real estate. I'm going to get into this. I'm going to get into that. But here's the problem with that. They don't have the right financial education to do it. There are a few things you're going to need to be successful. You're going to need financial education, credit education, and sales. There are so many people that don't know how to sell and don't know they're in sales. But yet still, whatever they're doing, it's an exchange of money. Everything is selling. Everything. No matter what you're doing, you're selling something. You're either selling a service, an opportunity, something tangible, intangible, or you're selling an idea. Everything is selling. If you are a massage therapist, that's what you're selling. But most people don't know how to sell it. So what I teach you first is, like my book says, is how to sell you on you. How to take that money you get and invest it in you. Because what we do is we take our check and we pay everybody except us. We pay our car note, 
our insurance, our rent, our mortgage, our buy clothes. So we sending that money to Polo, Tommy Hill Figure, Alabama Power, the gas company, the water company, everybody getting your lawn fixed. So what you want to do is like Robert Kiyosaki said, you want to pay yourself first. And see, most people, they think that saving is paying themselves first. But actually, you don't get any, that money doesn't accumulate. A lot of people don't know, you actually get taxed on that if you, just, if you want to keep saving. So what you want to do is find out, okay, I'm going to invest in me. How do I do that? What do I do? Well, one of the first things you can do is your credit. And what I teach in one of my workshops, how to align your personality with your passion and prosper, one of my topics is being brutally honest with yourself. You got to ask yourself, where am I at? Are you struggling? Can you go out and buy that brand new car right now with no money down? Can you go get that house with no money down? Can you start a business right now? If it costs 50000 to start that business. The majority of people say no. That's the majority of people. And that's why I'm here. It's because my goal is to educate everybody that's within the ear of hearing what I'm saying. Because I used to be like that, struggling. And I know how it is. And I had a lot of friends that told me, hey, man, I'm tired of working on this job. Because at the end of the week, you look at your hours and you look at your check, you're like, man, what's going on? I ain't got no money in the bank. Emergency come up, it's going to wipe me out. Car break down, now I can't get to work. I got to go borrow some money. I got to go to Tyler Pawn Place, Advance. Now you're borrowing money from Tyler Pawn Advance that you can't even pay. You don't have it. So you devil broke. You know what I'm saying? But this is where most people live. Here. Income, expenses, saving. I don't have any. The saving is gas and lunch money for next week. But my thing is this. What kind of life is that? Because I love what J.D. said. What's the point of living a mediocre life? You know what I'm saying? And my thing is this. When you're looking at your credit, taking your, your credit, that's not just you. That's financial stability for your kids, for college. You know, and that's what I'm working for is a legacy. Like my grandfather, you know, told me all of this stuff when I was in high school, but I didn't listen until I got older and I got all these credit cards. Now I had to. I didn't have a choice. But I remember what he said. But what he did, he left me and my grandparents and the other grandkids with property, paid for houses. He did that. And this is what I want to bring to the majority of people is this. How can I do that? Because I want to leave, I'm going to leave here one day, like everybody else. I want to leave my son with what? A legacy. You know what I'm saying? Something he can just walk into. You know, this is what Sam Walton did with Walmart. He left $200 billion a year for his for generations. You know, and that's my goal, which is a high goal, but it's possible now because of the internet. You know, you can start any business you want to with just a website. You don't need a brick and mortar address. You know what I'm saying? And this is what I love, which I read the other day, that you know Walmart was founded in 1962? Let me tell you something that's really shocking to me. You know, Facebook was founded in 2004. All right. Walmart had a 42-year head start. Google this. Facebook is worth more than Walmart. Right now. A lot of people don't know this stuff. But what you want to what you want to pay attention to is what does that have to do with me? Well, let me explain stuff to you. Walmart had a 42 year head start on Facebook. Let me ask you a question. Last month, did you spend $100 in Walmart? Oh, yeah. More. Basically, when you say, oh, yeah, you say, I spent more than $100. How much did you spend on Facebook? How much? Uh, about 150. You spent 150? How much did you spend at Walmart? Probably. <laughs> we don't uh, want to know you. Four or five hundred dollars. Exactly. Four to five hundred. Now my question is this: How can I spend more, which the average person does? Uh -huh. Some people don't spend no money on Facebook. You know right, what I'm most saying? Don't, yeah. Most of them, I'm just saying the majority, but I just want to use it as an example. Most people don't spend nothing. They just on Facebook posting pictures, liking whatever I'm doing, 
I got Wi-Fi, so I ain't even paying for that. You just paying for your phone. But you spent, let's just say, five hundred dollars compared to one hundred fifty dollars, or four hundred compared to zero, what most people pay. And this is like an average. We're talking about a month. You go grocery shopping every week. So we spend about four to five hundred at Walmart, but zero to one fifty on Facebook. And Facebook is worth more than Walmart. But we're spending more money here. So they're getting more of my money, but Facebook is worth more. Why is that? The power of the internet. Walmart is now. Exactly. Walmart is now. The CEO is talking to Facebook, Apple, Yahoo on how they can leverage what they're doing with their websites and different things like that because they know where everything is going. You know what I'm saying? But my thing is this. All you got to do if Facebook is worth more than Walmart, ride the coattails of Facebook. You can start a business and market on Facebook. And it's free. And the people that come on here is free. You know what I'm saying? See, it's free to walk in Walmart. But they charge you a Sam's Club. <laughs> Right. Sam Club is part of Walmart. But Facebook is bigger than both of them. And most people don't know how powerful that is. And what it is is this. We're in the digital age right now. The technological age. Technology is moving so fast we can't keep up with it. You know, it's like when I bought my phone, my son said, you know, the I bought the Note 4. He's like, you know, the Note 5 is coming out next month. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? It took me forever to, you know, get this one. But I'm not going to chase the phones. But most people do. But what I'm saying is this. If you get into the internet, the power of it and what it can do for you, you can start your business with your credit. And guess what? You don't have to pay for a building if you don't want to. You can start your business, get you a website, and start making money even while you're on the job. But most people don't know how to do that. But I teach it. It's easy for me because I just study it all day, every day. You know what I'm saying? And now Walmart, everybody was chasing Walmart. Now, guess who they're chasing? Everybody. They're trying to figure out how, because they know everything is eventually going to the point where you're going to go online, order something, and they're going to deliver your groceries. They know it. That's why Walmart is looking at them. You know what I'm saying? How are you doing what you're doing? How in the world can you beat us? Well, we got a 42-year head start. You see what I'm saying? So they're talking with Mark Zuckerberg, Cheryl, everybody over at Facebook. Everybody in Silicon Valley. Now, this is an interesting thing. Okay, if you're going to Walmart and spending money, and Walmart is looking at them, and look what how much a billion dollar company they are, $200 billion. Why don't you do that? With whatever you want to do. So I'm saying all that to say this. Just getting your credit repaired credit restored is excellent. But now once you have a high credit score, now what? what do you do? Now what? Because there are so many companies out there, they can restore your credit, they can raise it up, this, this, and that. And then they're, they're through with you. Now once you, you get back in debt or whatever you do, you go out buy these bunch of cars and lose your job and everything goes back down, now what? You gotta go back to them. But what we wanna do is take you up from that level, from here, personal credit to business credit. That's the next level. Now, see, you have so many people, they're really not even thinking about a business. So, you know what? They're not even thinking about business credit. But if I can introduce you to this and say, okay, now let's get you here first. Now, once we got you here, now let's start thinking about a business. Because jobs are not just being outsourced, they're being eliminated. No, you can take Walmart for an example. They put in all these self-checkouts. They put in, what, six in most stores? That eliminated so many jobs because you had people working eight-hour shifts, so that's at least three people for one. So you got six, that's 18 people. Because you, that self-checkout don't get sick. It don't miscount money. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to worry about it. It's just you just have one person there watching all six of them, and guess what? Good to go. So that's eliminating jobs. So we're not just talking to people that want to start a business, want to be an entrepreneur. But if you pay attention to where everything's going, 
you need to start thinking about that. You know, but if you're just on a job and you want to move up, well, you still need to come over here. You still need that. Because if you're on that job for 10 years and you lose it, now you've got this stability. So you went out and bought this house, bought this car. When you lose a job, the bank don't say, okay, don't worry about those payments. We know you, we, we know you lost your job. Don't worry about that. No, we want our money. Oh, you lost your job. We're sorry to hear that. When are you going to send the payment? Did you just hear me? I just lost my job. Oh, yeah, we understand that. So what day should we expect it? Uh, the day I find a job. I'll call. And that's what you go through. But see, once you have this taken care of over here, guess what? You got money to save now. Exactly. Now you're leveraging yourself, basically. You know what I'm saying? Instead of having to go to the title pawn and the advance loan and this and this and this, borrow money, grandma, my granddad, I need some help. My whole goal was to stand on my own two feet. You see what I'm saying? And that's what you do over here. You see what I'm saying? With your personal credit, you can say, hey, I'll go to the bank and get some money. You see what I'm saying? Five, ten grand to hold me over until I find, until I can, you know what I'm saying, get caught up so I won't get put out, the kids won't get put out. You see what I'm saying? And that's mostly why I teach entrepreneurship. Get your own. That's what my grandparents always told me. They always had their own business. Get your own. And if you don't have this, which they kept excellent credit, personal credit up to par, it's going to be very difficult to do it. Not saying you can't. You can, but now you just got to go and save it. You got to go in your pocket. My grandfather always told me I'd rather use somebody else's money rather than use my own. And this is what we're going to be talking about when we're talking about financial services. And not just that, but also the mindset of what you need to have in order to get it and keep it. Because it's easy to get it. It's easy. There's plenty of places that you can do that, that you can go to. But our goal is to get you to get it, and then now how do I keep it, and then also get business credit. You see what I'm saying? Because a lot of people don't know, if you have personal credit that's excellent, you can get one car. If you have excellent business credit, you can get 10. A lot of people don't know that. Because I actually talk to people about it. You know what, man? You can? Yeah. Now, that's, that's triggering them to thinking about, okay, a business. Because see, I got to get you thinking about a business before I get you thinking about business credit. You know what I'm saying? Now, what you have to figure out is what type of business. Well, what I tell people is you got to find your why. That's it. And this all starts the chain reaction of, now I need to get my credit straight. That's what that does. Because let me tell you something, we're doing you know, credit restoration or whatever, but we're not limited to that, especially me. I'm never limited to that. But you want to know that there is a genesis you need to think about. And so what you need to start doing is asking yourself these questions. What do I want to do? What would I want to do? Do I want to stay on this job from now on? I'm going to tell you something that's super powerful. A lot of people don't know this. Just all this research I do. You know the average person at Walmart makes $70 a day? $70 a day. You know Walmart makes $91 million a day? That's crazy. That's crazy. It's about $68. The average person. They make about $68 a day. Walmart makes $91 million. A day. 91 million a day. All their stores combined. The average person there makes $68. You know why it's going down? Because they're getting into this. The technology with the self-checkouts. My expenses is going down. I don't have to pay 18 people anymore. So my expenses are going down, but I'm still paying everybody. The same, now I'm making more. But see, the average person that works there, they don't know this. I don't even work there. And I know this. That should be motivation for whoever. Now, you got all these years, 18, 19 years in it. You want to stay and get your retirement, whatever, yeah. But you can also start your another side internet business. You know what I'm saying? But what is that going to take? Some education and some what? Some credit. Your credit leads to the money. And that's basically what we're talking about here. Who does not want more money? Everybody. But why do you want it? And that's the goal. We have to ask ourselves, why? Why are we here? What do I really want? What do I want for my family? You know, I've just been fortunate enough to work on a job where I could leave and go as I pleased. One reason, because I got good at it. You know, I learned how to sell. And they, they didn't make, 
So you know, take a couple days off if you need it. Most people can't do that. But my thing is this, we're actually talking about something that's bigger than just credit, financial service, financial education, credit restoration. We're talking about your life. We're talking about how good would it feel if your child every month had to go to a field trip and you could go. Well, if you got your own business, you can do what you want. My grandparents always did. You know what I'm saying? You can do what you want. But the problem is, how do we do that? Because you got to think about this. You know, your kid is growing up. They're never going to be five again, six again, seven again. That's the way I look at it. You know what I'm saying? Well, my job, I say, hey, I'm leaving. My son got this. I got to go to this. Oh, this football game. We're going out of town. You know, I had a guy in uh, 2012. I told him when I was doing something in this list. He said, Tim, I wish I could do that. He said, man, my daughter is getting married in Birmingham. He said, you know, I can't go. I said, why? He said, man, you know, I work at the water company. And then at night, I work, I got the janitorial thing I'm doing. He said, so I'm like, I'm like, man, you gotta, you gotta go. That's you. you gotta walk your daughter down the aisle. He said, man, I can't go. And see, things like that is what made me study and research all of this. To get people motivated to say, hey, man, you don't have to do that. Let me show you a different way. Not necessarily better, but a different way. And that's what this is. That's what we're going to be doing. That's what we're going to be talking about. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're going to be talking about here at the credit store. Not just personal credit, business credit, financial, taxes, entrepreneurship. We're going to be talking about what is your why? You know, just like this workshop says. How to align your personality with your passion and prosper. That's what you got to find out. What is my passion? Mine is helping. That's what I love to do. Helping and speaking. Like right here, that's what I love to do. I do it on the job. I'm supposed to be doing something else. I'm on the job doing this. Just like the same exact thing what I'm talking about. So I walked into it. I'm one of the lucky people. But I also teach you how to find your why. You know, if this is it, go for it. You know what I'm saying? Because this, what's going on right now is so crazy. All the shootings or whatever. You know, nothing's promised. Tomorrow's not promised. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is, if I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave my son here with something. Hopefully I don't get pulled over by the police. You know what I'm saying? What's going on right now? But these are things that we think about in the back of our mind, but we don't take action on them. And that's what we have to do. You know what I'm saying? All right. This is going to be our... Segment for the day, tune in.